Hello and welcome back to another full step by step PC build guide. And today I'm going to show you how to build a PC in the Monta King 65 Pro. If you see any parts you like, you'll find links to all these parts in the description. So, as usual, let's make a start by taking a detailed look at the case. So, the first thing I'm noticing with this case is just how dark the tint on the tempered glass panel is. So, if you're going for budget components, this could well be an advantage. But if you're putting high end components in here, it might be difficult to see your build. We'll find out at the end after we've done the build. To remove our tempered glass panel, there's a captive thumb screw at the back we need to loosen. Then we can pull the panel out from the top and lift up and away. And our other side panels removed in exactly the same way. Taking a look at the back of this panel, it should provide a good source of airflow as the majority of it is perforated with fine mesh and there's no additional dust filters. And our case's top panel can simply be popped off from the top. So you can get your hands out at the back here, lift the panel up to remove it. And again, if we take a look at the back of the panel we've just removed, you'll notice there's no additional dust filters. But again, as the holes in the mesh are quite fine, it shouldn't really be needed. On the top of the case, we've got a removable fan stroke rated air bracket. It's held in place with four screws. And on it, you're going to be able to mount up to three 120 or 240 millimeter fans, or up to 360 or 280 millimeter radiator. And then with all the screws removed, we can simply lift the bracket off. Taking a look at our front I.O., we've got a power button. We've got a button to control the effects. In our case, it's built in ARGB controller. We've got separate headphone and microphone jacks. We've got two USB type A ports and a single type C port. And our case's front tempered glass panel can simply be pulled off from the front. And we've got our case accessory box at the bottom, which we'll remove. So this is everything that comes in that case accessory box. And it is good to see that most of our screws are individually bagged, but only one set of screws is labelled. We've got additional stand-ups for our motherboard and for mounting our two and a half inch drives, the stand-up insertion and removal tool, some additional clips, and also some cable ties. It's good to see that Montac have installed two 140mm PWM ARGB reverse bait fans on the side of the case set to intake, so that should be bringing plenty of cool air into the build. If we prefer on the side, you can mount two 120mm fans or up to a 240mm radiator. And our third pre-installed case fan is on the rear. It's a 120mm PWM ARGB fan, and it is also possible to mount a 120mm radiator here. On the bottom of the case, you can mount up to three 120 or two 140mm fans. There is no radiator support, and that's because you're going to set your fans on top of the bottom of the case. You're then going to use the long radiator screws, and you can see we've got 120 and 140mm holes here. And you're going to put these down through your fans to secure them to the bottom of the case. In terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to 80x in size. You can see we don't have any additional cutouts for back connector motherboards and the maximum height of CPU cooler support is up to 175 millimeters. You can see we've got two rubber grommets over to the right hand side of the motherboard but we don't have any rubber grommets at the top or at the bottom. We've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets and in terms of graphics card support the maximum length supported is up to 420 millimeters. We've got a full length dust filter on the bottom of the case and it can be pulled out from the rear for a cleaning. Moving around to the rear of the case, we've got this cable covered door which is held on with two screws. And then with the screws removed, we can simply open the door up. If we take a look at the underside of this door, you'll see we've got mounting holes for two two and a half inch drives. Your drives are going to simply set into place here and here. And then you can simply screw the drives in from the other side. Now this door is removable. You can simply open it up and to free it from the case, you're going to want to push the top hinge towards the rear of the case. So we do this, the top hinge will pop out and then you're going to lift the door up and away. So in terms of cable routing space, this all looks to be really good. And we've got these Velcro cable straps in the middle to help manage all our cables. So you can see at the top of the case, we've got a six port PWM and ARGB hub. And you can see our rear fans are plugged into here and the two side fans are plugged into here, meaning we've got three free PWM and ARGB ports. Fan and ARGB hub is going to have motherboard control. You just need to plug the ARGB cable and the four pin PWM cable into headers on your motherboard. And don't forget to plug in the SATA power cable to your power supply, otherwise the hub won't work. Your power supply is going to go down at the bottom of the case and it's going to rest on this little bracket here. And the case does support full size ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 185 millimeters. Just above our power supply, we've got a hard drive cage. And on the outside of the hard drive cage, we've got these rubber grommets for mounting a two and a half inch drive. All you're going to have to do is screw the round standoffs that came loose in the case accessory bag into the back of your SSD, line them up with the rubber grommets, and then push into place to secure a two and a half inch drive outside the hard drive cage. To get access to the hard drive cage, there's a thumb screw at the top we're going to need to loosen, and then we can lift the cover up. So you can see we've got two drive trays in the cage. We just squeeze here to remove them. And on each of these drive trays, you're going to be able to mount either a two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive. 
You'll notice we've got four screws and it is possible to actually remove the drive cage. So this means you can simply remove the hard drive cage for additional space for cables. You can move your power supply up to the top if you prefer, or if for some reason you want to have two power supplies installed, it is possible. We're now ready to start working on our motherboard and we're going to be on our CPU, our CPU cooler, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before we put the motherboard into the case. To open the socket cover we need to push this lever down and towards the middle of the motherboard and then we can open the socket cover up. We can then lower our CPU down into the socket making sure we line it up with the notches at the top and at the bottom. And once we're happy our CPU is sitting correctly in the socket we can go ahead and close the socket cover down again. As we close this lever the black bit of plastic will pop off and we'll put it in the motherboard box for safekeeping. To remove the heatsink for M.2 SSDs we just need to push this lever up and then we're going to be able to tilt the heatsink up and lift away. We can then insert our M.2 SSD into the top slot and then if we flatten it down the little clip is going to hold it in place. We just need to remember to remove the plastic protection from the heatsink and then we can replace the heatsink. Next we've got our RAM which we're going to be installing in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU so we'll go ahead and open the clips on these slots. We can then line the RAM up with the slot and once we're happy everything's lined up correctly apply some firm pressure and it's going to clip into place. The first step to installing our CPU cooler is to remove the stock motherboard clips that are each held on with two screws. We've then got one of these orange spacers to go onto each corner. We can then set our CPU cooler bracket over the top. Now importantly we are going to want to have these notches going side to side rather than top to bottom. And then we just need to secure it into place with four screws. So we'll just set them into place first of all and then we can tighten them up with a screwdriver. Next we can add some thermal paste to the centre of our CPU. If you're using the CPU cooler from new make sure you remove the plastic protection from the cool plate. And then we can line the CPU cooler up with the bracket beneath. Then we just need to secure the cooler into place using a screwdriver. Our CPU fan header is this grey header at the top so we're going to go ahead and plug the PWM cable into it. We've got two options for our RGB cable. We've got an RGB header at the top of the motherboard so we can plug it into it. Or alternatively we can just plug this into our case's ARGB hub which is the option I'm going to go for so I'm going to remove it. Next we can insert the motherboard into the case, line that up with the standoffs beneath and then we'll secure it into place using the screws with a little lip around the outside from the case accessory bag. I haven't installed screws into these holes here because I'm going to be using these for my GPU support bracket. If we're using a different GPU without the support bracket just put the standard screws in here. So unfortunately as I found out later on in the video because of this motherboard's top PCIe slot position being installed in the first two slots in the case it wasn't compatible with this GPU support bracket so I wasn't actually able to install it. So if you're using the same hardware as me just install your motherboard in the case using all the standard screws. Next we've got our case cables to plug in. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So we can bring it through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the HD audio text facing down the way. We've got two ARGB headers next to this so I'm going to bring the ARGB cable coming from our ARGB hub and get it plugged in. We've got three system fan headers down the bottom right of the motherboard so I'm going to bring the PWM cable coming from our fan hub through and get it plugged in. Then we've got our front panel connectors and they're going to go into the left hand side of this header at the bottom right of the motherboard and we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing up the way. Our USB type A cable is going to go into this header here so we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header and push it into place. And then we've got our front panel type C header just here so we'll bring the cable through the cutout, line it up and push into place. I'm then going to route the ARGB cable coming from our CPU cooler through to the back and we can get it plugged into the ARGB hub at the top of the case. And next we've got our power supply and I've gone ahead and plugged in the cables that we're going to need. So I've plugged in a 24 pin motherboard cable, two EPS cables, our 12 volt high power cable to power our graphics card and a SATA power cable to power our fan and ARGB hub. We can then set our power supply into place with the fan facing out the way. We can then secure the power supply into place using four of the large screws from the case accessory bag. We've got an 8 and 4 pin EPS header at the top left of the motherboard. So we can bring our cables through the cutout, line them up with the header and push into place. And then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. Our 24 pin cable is going to go into this header here. So we'll bring it through the rubber grommet at the side, line it up with the header and push into place. And then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. And then at the back of the case we just need to plug the SATA cable coming from our power supply into the SATA cable coming from our fan and ARGB hub. 
We're now ready to install our graphics card. We're going to need to remove the top two PCI expansion slot brackets. Next, we can line our graphics card up with the slot. And once we're happy, everything's lined up. It's just some firm pressure and the graphics card will clip into place. And we can then secure the graphics card using the thumb screws we removed earlier on. We can then bring our 12 volt high power cable through the cutout at the bottom and get it plugged into the graphics card. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management to get the panels back on again. Okay, so that's our build complete. If you don't know how to install Windows, the drivers, the RGB software, enter the BIOS, update the BIOS, adjust all your BIOS settings, I've made another video that covers all of that, and you'll find a link to that video in the description. In terms of our temperatures, our 9700X idled at 44 degrees and reached a maximum of 75 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test. The Aorus Master RTX 4070 idled at 30 degrees and reached a maximum of 53 degrees during the stability test. We had average noise levels of 37 decibels at idle and 43 decibels under load. So the temperatures show you really don't need to overspend on your CPU cooler with these new Ryzen CPUs. This £30 cooler did a perfectly good job of cooling our Ryzen 7. So this case is currently on sale in the UK for around about £80. And in general, I do think you are getting pretty good value for money. You're getting a good looking case with good build quality and three good PWM ARGB fans included with a PWM and ARGB hub. So that's not bad for £80. There was really only really two things I wasn't impressed with. The first is the dark tint on the temper glass. With the lighting off, you can't see into your build at all. Although with some lighting on, it is possible to see in. So it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. The only other thing I wasn't particularly impressed with was the case accessory box. Having some of the screws loose in the box and other bags of screws not labelled seemed to be a bit of a backstop for Montec, who have been doing such a good job in this area. But apart from that, it's another solid case from Montec. Um, if I was picking up a version, I would definitely go for the white one because the tint on the tempered glass is definitely too dark for my personal taste. Um, if you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step PC build guide, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.